Good morning and welcome to Richmond Hill Pentecostal Church. I'm Pastor Genevieve and we are so thrilled that you've chosen to join us this morning for worship. If you're a first time visitor, we want to welcome you and invite you to fill out a connection card online at rhpc.ca. Good morning to Richmond Hill Pentecostal Church. I'm calling the church family to a 21 day Daniel fast to seek the Lord for breakthrough. Breakthrough for you, your household, and the people of God. Starting next Sunday, February 21st, I'm inviting you to join me on a 21-day Daniel fast. That's 21 days of prayer and fasting. I believe it's time for a greater level of prayer and intercession. We need to pray that COVID-19 is defeated. We need to pray for healing and restoration and revival. We need to pray for our church to rise up by faith. What is the Daniel fast? The Daniel fast is based on the prophet Daniel's practice of prayer and fasting. He prayed three times a day, morning, noon, and night. His diet consisted of fruits, vegetables, and water, and he fasted for 21 days. We're gonna follow Daniel's example and seek the Lord for 21 days. Here are some things you can do during the 21 days. You can commit to the Daniel fast, fruits, vegetables, and water. And you can pray three times a day, morning, noon, and night. Or you can also give up something for 21 days. Maybe giving up a meal, giving up watching television for 21 days, giving up social media for 21 days. Whatever you choose, it is totally up to you as the Lord leads. If you are interested in being part of the Daniel Fast, I'm inviting you to sign up to declare your commitment. We need an army of prayer warriors willing to stand in the gap. To sign up for our Daniel Fast, send an email to andrea at info at rhpc.ca. Let's build a prayer movement that pulls down strongholds and sets people free. Church, we just want to thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving your tithes and offerings to the Lord. And if you give by e-transfer, we want to encourage you to continue giving in this way. If you do not use e-transfer, you can drop off your tithes and offerings outside in our secure mailbox located at the rear end of our church building. Hey RHPC, have you heard the news? We have a new church website and app. You can visit our new church website at rhpc.ca. And if you would like to download our app, it's available in the Google Play and App Store. All you have to do is search Richmond Hill Pentecostal. In addition to our new app and webpage, we also have a new giving feature, which we hope will make giving more convenient for you. You can use your credit card or bank card in order to give using the new giving feature. So make sure you check that out on our new website and app. If you're a grades three to five, join me online every Thursday at 5 p.m. on Zoom for our small group series. If you need more information, just send me an email to Bridget at rhpc.ca. Hey, Collide Junior High. Coming up this Wednesday, we have another Zoom check-in, so we hope to see you there. Contact me at genevieve at rhpc.ca if you need the Zoom link. We are continuing our Todd's and Babes program every Friday. If you want more information on the packages or more information on what this program consists of, just send me an email to bridget at rhpc.ca. And now, church, Renee is coming to lead us in a time of praise and worship. Well, hello to the people of God. It's good to be here with you. Maybe we're not here face to face, but we'll take this. It's, it's, we'll make the best of it, right? It's good to be with you in the house of the Lord here online. And so we're going to have some wonderful time of praise and worship. So you in your homes and me here. So let's gather together in God's presence together as God's people and praise and worship him. Amen. And every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. 
Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God my Savior, God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer. Yes, He is, yes, He is, God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is, and every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God my Savior, God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer. Yes, He is, yes, He is, God my Savior, God my healer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. And every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. Come on. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. Every praise, every praise, every praise, one more. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh God, we give you every praise. We give you every bit of thanksgiving in our hearts today. Because God, you are worthy. God, you are our healer. You are our deliverer. You are our soon coming king. You are the great one who lives and reigns forever and ever and ever and ever. Every praise, 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 every praise is to our God, we give you thanksgiving. We give you praise today, God, for you are worthy. So worthy. So worthy, God. Is he worthy, church? He certainly is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's our king. He's our healer, as we declared. He is our deliverer. And maybe sometimes we're looking. You know, we're looking for the manifestation of that, aren't we? God our healer, God our deliverer, God our savior. And he is, he is who he says he is. And God, we just thank you that you are who you say you are. You are who you say you are. You went all the way to Calvary for us. And 
And all the way to Calvary He went for me He went for me He went for me All the way to Calvary He went for me He died to set me free All the way oh, All the way to Calvary He went for me He went for me He went for me All the way to Calvary He went for me set me free although I had so many many sins Jesus took them all away and he pardoned me although I had so many many sins Jesus took them all away and he pardoned me oh, all the way to Calvary he went for me sins Jesus took them all away and he pardoned me although I had so many many sins Jesus took them all away and he pardoned me all the way to Calvary he went for me and you he went for me he went for me all the way to Calvary he went for me he died to save me Many, many sins Jesus took them all away and he pardoned me although I had so many many sins Jesus took them all away Jesus took them all away Jesus took them all away and he pardoned me what a gracious God what a good good God we have he went all the way to Calvary for you and for me. Hallelujah. What a gracious God. What a gracious God. Is God good to you? Has he been good to you? He's good all the time. And you know, we sing that song, all the way to Calvary he went for me. And maybe you're sitting or standing or just pondering and thinking about yeah, Renee, maybe he went to Calvary for you. But you don't know what I've done. You don't know my past, Renee. You don't know where I've come from. You don't know those things that are hidden. You don't know those secrets, those maybe those deep, dark secrets that I haven't told anybody about. Maybe Calvary was enough for you, but I don't know about me. But God says, Calvary is enough. For he said, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever, whosoever would believe would not perish, but have everlasting life. So that includes you too. His blood is enough. His blood is enough. Will you receive the truth of that word into your heart today? God is a gracious God. The Bible says he is slow to anger and abounding in love, and he doesn't treat us as our sins deserve, but as a father has compassion on his children, so he has compassion on those who fear him. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, oh, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace 
Oh, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Was blind, but now I see. Was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. For the amazing grace of God. Jesus, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for Calvary. We thank you for your amazing love, oh God, for us. Thank you, God, that you open our eyes, God. You open our eyes. You show us truth. How great is the salvation of our God. Church, how great is the salvation of our God. Can we celebrate his goodness today? He's such a good God. He's faithful. He will meet every need that you have according to his glorious riches by Christ Jesus. He is your all-sufficient one. He is here, hallelujah. He is here. He is your Savior. He is your healer. He is your deliverer. He is your mighty God. He is your everlasting Father. He is your Prince of Peace. He is your shield in the storm. He is that strong tower that you can run into. And you are safe. You are safe. You are safe in the hands of Almighty God. Hallelujah. And you come at the right time when I least expect it, never behind. So why would I be surprised when you deliver Every time, it's every time, a mountain tops, you stay the same in valleys low, you never change. And I believe that I will see the good. Your faithfulness remains. God is faithful in every season. He changes not. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You go. You go before me to prepare a blessing. Make a way. It's more than I could imagine, more than I can fathom or comprehend. On mountain tops, you stay the same in valleys low. Never change, and I believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord. Let faith arise in your heart. I'm confident as seasons change, your faithfulness remains. church he's gonna do it again God's gonna do it again his goodness never fails he's gonna do it again you go you go before me to prepare a blessing you make way it's more than I Oh, 
God, church. He's a faithful God, church. We declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. We declare the faithfulness of God in every season of our lives. We look back and he's been there. We look to the future and he is there. We look today and he is our very present help in time of any trouble. He is here. Hallelujah. The God of our present the God of our future. Hallelujah. We have much goodness in store for us. Can we sing? When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun. God's praise than when we first begun. Praise God. 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 Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. One more time, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise 
praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, he's worthy, church. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Let everything in me praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, church, lift up a sound of praise and the sound of worship fill the room where you are right now. Let the song of thanksgiving fill the air, fill this place. God, we thank you and we praise you and we glorify you, God. Awesome God. Awesome God. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer today. On this Lord's Day, on this Sunday morning service, I invite you to join with me in prayer. We're going to go to the Lord on behalf of the church family. The Word of God says from Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Do you believe that, church? God's going to supply every need. And I believe that God is going to meet your need today, wherever you are. And we're going to pray breakthrough and healing. And so church, would you join with me today and let's seek the Lord. Let's go and pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to your house today. And Lord, I just pray for the people of God. I pray that you'd give us a heart of praise. I pray the joy of the Lord would be our strength. I pray that we come into the presence of the Lord with singing, the fruit of our lips, giving praise. We magnify you, we exalt you, we worship you, we honor you. You're worthy to be praised. Glory to God. Lord, I pray that you would forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wash us, renew us, revive us again. I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen our faith today. I come against doubt and fear and worry. And I pray, Lord, that we would rise up by faith in Jesus' name that, Lord, you give us the strength to persevere, the strength to endure, the strength to keep going. Lord, we pray for the people of God today, and I bring to you the needs of the family. Lord, I pray for the Pazic family today on the one-year anniversary of Christina's passing. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen Alex and Cindy and Lily and their family today, that they would sense the comfort of Almighty God surrounding them and giving them strength. Lord, your word says that you are the God of all comfort, and I pray that you would strengthen the Pazic family today. Lord, I also pray for John Dooney, who recently lost his sister. I pray, Lord, that you'd be with John and that you'd be with the family today and strengthen them in the midst of their grief. I pray that John would know the healing power of Jesus in his life, be with Joanne today, be with Christine and Jonathan and the whole family, and I pray your blessing upon their household today in Jesus' name. Lord, there's people in our church that need healing. I pray for Jim Sims, Mila Burden, Diane Lefebvre, Ale uh, Angelica Lemani, Philip and Donna Shen, Irma McIntosh, Jennifer Dela Cruz, David Dela Cruz, Stephen Hayton's daughters, Ellie Omrani, Trudy Klusterhoff, Terry Ann Braithwaite, Tara Patton. Lord, you know every need in the house of God. All those who, are, who have unspoken requests in their own secret place of their own heart, Lord, you know what they need today. I pray that you would be their strength. You would be their provider. You would be their hope. You would be their joy. Lord, we pray for all our seniors and shut-ins. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, meet their needs. Meet them where they're at today. Give them strength. Lord, we pray for all our students and parents that you'd be with them. Be with our teachers, Lord. Father, we pray that you'd be with all our local business owners. Prosper them. Father, I pray that coronavirus would be washed away. 
I pray that you'd set your people free. Lord, I pray the house of God would be filled again and that we would come together and celebrate your faithfulness. We give you praise. We ask your blessing now upon this service for your glory and our benefit. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Thank you, Renee, for your ministry today in song. I so appreciate you leading the people of God in worship. The Lord bless you today. We're so blessed to have such uh, wonderful people that give from Sunday to Sunday in the house of God. And even though the sanctuary is empty today, I know that you're with us online, wherever you're joining us from around the world, in York Region and Richmond Hill. Thank you for being with us and we're together by faith. I'm so glad the church is not the four walls of the building, but the church is the people of God. And so we rejoice together, we worship together, and we will be back one day soon. If you have your Bible, I want to invite you to take your Bible and turn in the Word of God to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 12 to 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, 12 to 14. We are going to uh, go to the Word today, and so please follow along with me if you have your Bible, and we want to uh, talk about prayer today. Before I read the text, I just want to remind the church that next Sunday, February 21st, starts our 21-day Daniel fast. It's a time for us to uh, go to the Lord in prayer over these specific days. I'm believing for a greater level of intercession. Church, I believe it's time to stand in the gap and pray for the people of God, pray for our community, pray for our nation. And so if you're able, uh, I want to invite you to sign up at info at RHPC to demonstrate your commitment to prayer. And a lot of you have already signed up, so thank you so much. We're building an army of prayer warriors. Glory to God. And I want to take a moment and encourage our young people, our students, our young adults. I don't want you to miss this. If I could just uh, speak it out to our young people, I want you to be part of this. This is one of the important moments in the life of our faith and in the life of the church. So I'm inviting all our students and young people to sign up for our 21-day fast. This is as the Lord leads you to give something up for 21 days. Maybe it's television, maybe it's social media, maybe it's uh, forgoing a meal. If you want to join us on the Daniel fast, where you can, you can do this as well, which is fruits and vegetables and water for 21 days, then you can do that as well. But uh, I'm looking to build an army, an army of believers, young and old. And so would you, I want to encourage you to sign up and stand with us in faith, stand with us in prayer. Stand in the gap for a better day. And church, I believe that this is the time for the people of God to fast and pray for breakthrough. And so uh, join me if you can starting this Sunday, February 21st, our 21-day Daniel fast. Are you ready for the word of God? I'll be reading 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 12 to 14. This is the word of God. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence, hello, did you see that? Or send pestilence among my people. Verse 14, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. The word of the Lord. Church, would you help me? Let's pray today. Heavenly Father, we come into your house. We open the word of God. Lord, I pray that you would forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord, I'm not worthy in my own strength to stand at this pulpit and open the Word of God. 
But I pray that the precious blood of Jesus would cover me today and I would stand in the righteousness of Christ. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would illuminate the words of this uh, message today. I pray, Lord, that we would feed on the Word of God and that we would be strengthened in faith. So, Lord, challenge us. Challenge us to step up. Challenge us to step up by faith. And I pray, Lord, that we would be strengthened and encouraged to keep going, to keep praying, to keep believing. Church, I believe breakthrough is coming. And I pray it for you, for your household, for your family, and for the house of God. To God be the glory. Great things He has done. Great things He is doing. And great things He will do. In Jesus' name, amen. This is Israel's moment. This is Jerusalem's moment. This is King Solomon's moment. The time has come. This is the grand opening of the temple in Jerusalem. The gates are open. The temple courts are filled. The people are gathered. The stage is set. And King Solomon stands and spreads out his hands and dedicates the house of God to the glory of God. Church, what a moment. What a moment in Israel's history. One of the most defining moments in their history is the opening of Solomon's temple, the temple dedicated to the glory of God. And here in front of all the people gathered at the temple on the day of its dedication, King Solomon concludes his dedicatory prayer. And what happens when Solomon concludes his prayer in front of all the people who've gathered to worship God on the first day of the dedication of the temple? What happens? Fire falls from heaven and consumes the burnt offerings on the altar. And then what happens? Church, what a moment, what a moment in history when the Shekinah glory of the Lord fills the temple. In fact, the writer of Chronicles says that the glory of the Lord is so strong. The glory of the Lord is so heavy. The glory of the Lord is so intense. The glory of the Lord is so tangible that even the priests cannot enter the house of God. Show me your glory. This is what's happening on this day in Israel. The glory of the Lord has come. Church, when I read this story, in 2 Chronicles, I read about the coming of the Lord, the Shekinah glory resting on the temple. And as I read it, my heart leaps and I pray, yes, Lord, one more time, show us your glory. Church, I pray that for you in your life, I pray the glory of the Lord. I pray it upon your house your family, your children. I pray the glory of the Lord. Lord, open up our eyes, open our ears, open our spirit that we would say, Lord, show us your glory one more time. I don't know if you've ever experienced the glory of the Lord. Maybe there was a time that you can think back, a time in your history when you caught a glimpse of the glory of the Lord. Maybe it was at a prayer meeting. Maybe it was at an altar at the front of a church. Maybe it was at your own bedside time of prayer. Maybe it was at a prayer meeting where you suddenly became aware. It wasn't just a normal meeting. There was something different about this meeting. Something in your spirit that leapt up within you. You became aware of the glory of the Lord. I can remember the time years ago at a prayer meeting, a time of fasting and a time of prayer when I was a young man and God called me 
called me to serve him full time. And I remember giving my heart to the Lord. I said to him, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll do what you want me to do. And I can remember in those moments the glory of the Lord. In such a manner, in such a way that I even felt the presence physically, the weight of the glory of God. Church, I just want you to know, it's my prayer the glory would return. It's my prayer we would again in the house of God sense and feel the tangible presence of the living God. But listen to me, people of God. You don't need to be at this house at this hour, right where you are, right where you are in your own home, in your own prayer closet. You can sense and experience the tangible glory of the living God. Church, there's a time in all our lives, there's a time in our walk with God, there's a time in our faith where we have to push aside distraction, where we need to uh, make time to get alone with God, not just for two minutes or five minutes, but we need to set apart time to seek the Lord. Why? Because I believe it's time for another visitation of the presence of the living God. Church, I want you to know right where you are, you can, you can experience. Church, right where you are, you can experience the glory of the living God. And I pray this over you. I pray this over your household. I pray it for your children and your grandchildren that the glory of the Lord would rest upon you. You would sense and feel and know the glory of God. It's not not just head knowledge, but according to the Spirit of the living God that dwells within you, you would become aware. Church, hear me today. You'd become aware. You'd have a sudden awareness, a sudden awareness that you are in the very presence of the living God. Church, I want you to know it's my prayer for 2021. It's my prayer for this house. It's my prayer for the people of God. What's my prayer? A very simple one sentence prayer. Lord, show us your glory. Lord, show us your glory in 2021. Church, we've been through so much. You've been through so much. There's been such difficulty and hardship. I believe we're getting ready for another visitation. I believe we're getting ready for another impartation. I believe we're getting ready for another revelation. It's time for the glory of the Lord to rest upon you, to rest upon the house of God, and to rest upon the people of God. Church, I pray it. Lord, come on church, say it with me. Church, pray it with me. Even a one sentence prayer by faith. Make it bold. Make it a declaration. Lord, show us your glory. Glory to God. Church, I pray even now, some of you watching at home, I pray it right now, an increase of the Shekinah glory of the living God, that you would have a fresh revelation of the presence of the living God. Church, hear me today. I'm hungry and thirsty for the glory of God. Over the last few weeks, I felt the Holy Spirit speaking into my heart and, and asking me to turn off the news. I've been telling you since the pandemic started, it's time to what? Come on, turn down the news and what? Turn up the praise. Well, over the last few weeks, I have set myself apart from all that's going on. I heard there's an impeachment going on in Washington. I heard there's this going on in Ottawa. Listen to me. I'm not part of it. I don't want to, I don't care. I don't know. Listen to me. I'm hungry and thirsty for the glory of the Lord. And for me, I've been setting, finding time to, to set myself apart to say, Lord, this is my prayer. This is my hunger. This is my thirst. Show me your glory. 
And I pray that for you. Every household represented. Oh, church, hear me. Listen to me. There's over 800 people that consider RHBC their home church. I pray for every one of you. I pray from the, from the youngest to the oldest. I pray a fresh revelation of the glory of the living God. I pray that over you today. And so, church, I want you to know this is what happens in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. The glory of the Lord has come upon the temple and the people witness the Shekinah glory of God. It is so heavy that the priests cannot even enter the temple. Church, could you imagine in a, a one day coming to this house and you can't even get in the door? Because the glory of God is so strong in this house. It is my prayer for you. It is my prayer for a fresh visitation. Okay, back to Jerusalem. Are you still with me? Let's go back to Jerusalem. The people are at the temple and they're witnessing the glory of God. What, what, do, they do? what do they do? They bow their faces to the ground and they worship the Lord. As the people bow their faces to the ground and they worship the Lord, what did the people declare? With one voice, with one heart, and in one accord, the people of God declared together, this is what they said, for the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Church, can you say that with me this morning? Come on, let me hear it. Come on, let's, let's fill our rooms with a declaration. In the midst of the glory of God, what did the people say? Come on, for the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. So church, today I want you to do something for me. I want you to allow me to remind you that the Lord is good. Can somebody say amen? Re allow me to remind you that in the midst of a pandemic, God is good. In the midst of trouble, God is good. In the midst of adversity, God is good. For the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Hear me, church, don't miss this. We can, if we're not careful, we can get up in the morning and start complaining. If we're not careful, we can go through our day and our attitude can murmur and complain and worry and fear about this and that and the other thing. Church, I want to be somebody that gets up in the morning and knows in my spirit, knows in my heart, know in my faith, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. And His mercy endures forever. I want you to be able to say it in the midst of adversity. I want you to say it in the midst of trouble. I want you to say it even though you don't know what to do and where to turn. Church, even in the times of difficulty, I want you to know the God you serve is good. The God you serve is merciful. Praise the name of the Lord. What does David say in Psalm 27? I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Church, hear me this morning. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. I want you to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so during this season, one of the things that I have noticed, especially with the news of variants, uh, these COVID-19 variants and, and all the changes in the school system with March break being canceled. As I've spoken to different people and been uh, uh, in touch with others, I've discovered something that's going on right now. People are getting discouraged. Maybe you have felt discouraged this week. People <coughs> around are getting discouraged. Why? Well, we're reading about vaccines being delayed. And people are stressed. Teachers are weary. Our seniors are lonely. Young people are anxious. Our parents are strained. Marriages are stressed. Our borders are closed. 
Politicians are exhausted. Finances depleted. Inflation is up. Optimism is down. Have you noticed grocery prices have increased and patience has decreased? And wearing a mask is becoming an inconvenience. Just a little while ago, I went all the way up to the front of a store, but I had forgotten my mask. I had to go all the way back to the car, and I thought, this is such an inconvenience. And if that's not all, church, by the way, you live in Canada in the month of February, the coldest month of the year. Listen to me. I know people are discouraged. I know this is a challenging time of year. But church, hear the Word of God. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Why don't you declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Lord, thank You for a roof over my head. Thank You for food in the fridge. Thank You for clothes in the closet. Thank You, Lord, for Your blessings. Thank You, Lord, for Your provision. Thank You, Lord, for Your mercy. Church, say it again. The Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. This is what the people declared on the dedication day of the temple. When the Shekinah glory rested on the temple. And so what happens? What happens after the temple is dedicated? Well, the people celebrate. They have feasts. They rejoice. They worship. But when the time of celebration is over, they're sent home. They go from celebration back to real life. They go, f- to, they go back from the glory back to the grind. Hello, did you just hear me? They go from the glory of God, the Shekinah glory, the rich presence that's so tangible and so heavy that the priest can't even enter the temple. Wow, the glory of the living God. But church, after the celebration, the people are sent home. And they go from the glory back to the grind. They go back to real life. Back to real problems. Back to reality. Church, how is it possible? How, when you've experienced the glory, how can you go back to reality? It reminded me of the story of Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. Do you remember the story where they see Moses and Elijah and Jesus and they are transfigured in the glory of God? And Peter, in his excitement, in his wonder, as he sees the Shekinah glory of the living God, Peter declares, he says in Matthew 17, Lord, let us make three tabernacles or three shelters. One one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Why? What is Peter saying? Church, what is Peter saying? Peter is saying, oh Lord, can we not stay right here on the top of the mountain in the glory of the Lord? Church, I want you to know, when it's so good, we always want more. Hello? When it's good, we want more. When it's good, we want more. Church, you know all about this. Parents with kids who, when they talk about Wonderland, why do they keep wanting to go back to Wonderland? Because it's so much fun. It's so good. When things are good, we want more. And church, by faith, when we're in the presence of God, we just say, more, Lord, more of you. And Peter, on top of the Mount of Transfiguration, he wants to build shelters that we wouldn't just stay for a few minutes, but we would stay day after day in the glory of the living God. But I want you to know something this morning. Listen to me, church. I want you to know that faith, I'm talking about faith. Listen to me. Faith isn't meant for the mountaintops. Faith, listen to me. Faith is meant for the valleys. Church, I want you to know it's in the valleys. It's that faith is so important. 
It's in the valleys that faith matters most. It's in the valleys that faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's in the valley, church. It's in the valley. It's in the valley, that place of difficulty, that place of darkness, that place of challenge, that place of hardship. It's in the valley that our faith is tested. It's in the valley our faith is tried in the furnace of adversity. Ah, uh-uh. listen, it's glorious to have faith on the mountaintops. But listen to me. Hear me, people of God. Your faith isn't meant for the mountaintop. Your faith is meant for the valley. Oh, it's easy to have faith on the dedication of Solomon's temple, the Shekinah glory. But they go from the glory back to the grind. Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration. Oh, if we could build three shelters and stay longer. Why? Because of the glory of the Lord. But church, I want you to know, your faith isn't meant for the mountaintops. Hear me, people of God. Your faith is meant for the valley. It's easy to have faith in the glory, but it's when the rubber meets the road. Hello, am I talking to somebody this morning? It's when the it's it's in the time of trouble. It's in the the night watches when you're up in the middle of the night worried about tomorrow. Church, it's when you don't know where to turn. It's these moments. It's in the valley. Your faith is designed for the valley. Hear me. It's faith in God that's going to see you through. It's faith in God. It's faith in God that's going to sustain you. It's faith in God that's going to preserve you. It's faith in God that's going to write a new chapter. It's faith in God that's going to bring you a new season. It's faith in God that's going to give you a greater future. Church, hear me. Your faith wasn't meant for the mountaintops. Your faith is meant for the valleys. I want you to hear me this morning. Don't miss what I'm saying. Listen to me, people of God. Some of you, some of you are thinking about giving up. You've looked all around and you've become weary and worn out. You don't know how you're going to make it to tomorrow. You get discouraged. You hear information that tears you down, that brings you down, and you come to a place and you feel like you want to give up. Church, can I encourage you today? Listen to me. I'm I'm speaking to born-again believers. Hear me today. This is not the time to give up. Hear me, church. This is the time to grow up. We need to grow up as men and women by faith that in the midst of adversity, we're going to keep going. In the midst of trouble, we're going to keep going. Church, hear me today. Your faith isn't meant for the mountaintops. Your faith, your faith, hear me people of God, your faith is meant for the valley. I love what Peter says in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1.13. He says, I like the way it's written in the old King James. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. What's Peter saying? He is saying, prepare your mind for action. And church, I believe that in this dark hour, I believe in these difficult days. I believe in this time of adversity. I believe it's time for the church to gird up the loins of our mind. I believe it's time for the church for us to prepare our minds for action. Hear me, people of God. This is not a time to shrink back. This is not a time to grow weary. This is a time to rise up by faith. Church, your faith was not designed for the mountaintops. Your faith is designed for the valley. And I want you to know, ah, God is going to sustain you. Glory to God. God's going to see you through. Praise the name of the Lord. And so, church, who am I talking to this morning? I believe that I'm here to encourage you. Come on, let's grow up. Let's keep growing. Let's move forward. Let's keep pressing. We're going to keep believing. When everybody goes aside and falls away, church, I pray that God finds you faithful. Is He going to find you faithful? 
I pray, this is my prayer, Lord, find me faithful. Find me faithful in the small things. Find me faithful in prayer. Find me faithful in obedience. When all the world goes their own way, Spirit of the living God, in the midst of the valley, Lord, find me faithful in Jesus' name. I've got to wrap it up. I'm almost done. Listen, are you still with me? Let's go back to Jerusalem. And so the people have gone home. Listen now, remember, they've gone from the glory back to the grind. And now, what happens? 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12. What happens? The Lord appears to Solomon by night to give him a personal message. And it says in verse 12, Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, When I shut up the heaven and there's no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send COVID-19 among my people. And then verse 14, one of the most famous verses in all of the Word. The Lord says to Solomon all by himself at night, in the quietness of the hour, I don't believe this verse was shouted. I believe it was whispered. Whispered to King Solomon. The Lord says to King Solomon, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Church, I believe this night vision of King Solomon where the presence of the living God meets Solomon in the night watches and speaks to him, I believe it's a word for King Solomon. I believe it's a word to speak into his life as the leader of the people of Israel. Because Solomon just witnessed all the people praising God in the Shekinah glory. But church, they went from the glory to the grind. They went from the mountaintop to the valley. And when times get tough, when times get difficult, when times are uncertain, will those same people, hear me, will those same people that gave glory on the mountaintop, will they pray? Will they pray? Will they humble themselves? Will they seek the Lord? Will those same people who witnessed the glory, will those same people who declared His goodness, will those same people in difficult days, will they call to me in times of trouble? I believe this is a call for Solomon to take up leadership and to teach the people that it's not about the mountaintops. It's about the valleys. Church, hear me again. Your faith was not designed for the mountaintop. Your faith was designed for the valley. What's the Lord saying to Solomon? In the time of drought, where there is no rain, will your people pray? In the time of locusts, where there is no crop, will your people pray? In the time of pestilence, when there is no strength, Will the people pray? Church, I believe this is a word of God for King Solomon and it's a word of God for us today that in the time of difficulty, the word of God says, if my people will humble themselves, if my people will pray, if my people will seek my face, if my people will turn from their wicked ways, if my people will call on the name of the Lord, in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of the valley, in the midst of the hardship, in the midst of the trouble, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. What a promise. Well, church, I'm almost done, but uh, I, I just want to ask you a qu quick question today. Do you know God's phone number? Listen, I still f remember... Uh, I remember going to kids' church as a kid. Maybe if you think back, if you grew up in church, that you might remember Sunday school or going to kids' church and learning about Jesus and learning about the Word of God uh, from a child. I can still remember being a child in kindergarten, grade one, grade two, going to a little Pentecostal church 
My older brother was the Sunday school teacher, and he taught us something that I have never, ever forgotten. I can still remember my brother teaching the class of all the children of which I was one, and he told us, do you know God's phone number? And so on this day, on this Sunday school lesson, all the children learned God's phone number. Do you know God's phone number? I learned that day what God's phone number is. God's phone number is Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Church, I want you to be able to call on the name of the Lord. You can call yourself a Christian and not pray. You can think of yourself religious and not know how to fast. You can go to church regularly and not open the Word of God. I know all that is true. Church, hear me today. I believe that this is the hour and this is the time and this is the moment for the people of God to mobilize by faith. And I believe it's time. Uh, it's time for the people of God to call on the name of the Lord. Church, this is the hour. And I believe this word for us today is calling us to seek the Lord, calling us to stand in the gap for the people of God. I believe it's time for us to pray that coronavirus is dried up at the root and we are set free to come to the house of God and worship our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Church, it's time for the people of God to call on the name of the Lord. I was reminded of these verses. I'm going to close in just a moment and I'm going to pray. 1 Kings chapter 18, 21, Elijah says, he says, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow Him. But if Baal, follow Him. What's Elijah doing? He's calling the people to make a decision. Who are you going to follow? Church, my call is to the people of God. Who are you going to call on? Who are you going to follow? Who are you going to pray to? That you would come and call on the name of the Lord. Jesus says in Matthew 6, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Church, there's a lot of people search, uh, serving money. There's a lot of people that are running after this material possession and running after this. I want you to know it's time for the people of God to choose. It's time for the people of God to call. It's time for the people of God to mobilize. It's time for the people of God to stand in the gap. One more verse, Joshua 24, 15. Joshua says to the people of God, come on, choose for yourselves this day. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me, someone declare it. Come on, church, declare it over your family. Declare it over your house. Come on, as for me and my house, as for me and my house, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Church, hear me today. I believe this is a word for us today. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Listen to me, people of God. This is the time for the people of God to rise up. This is the time for the people of God to pray. This is the time for the people of God to intercede. Church, there's no other time like the present time. And I believe this Daniel fast, starting Sunday, February 21st, this Daniel fast is the start of something new in this house. This Daniel fast is the start of breakthrough. Church, I believe, 
I'm praying for breakthrough. I'm praying for the glory. Listen to me. You might feel like you're in the grind. You might feel like you're in the press. You might feel discouraged. I come against those things today and I pray that God would fill you with the glory of God. I pray a breakthrough in your life. I pray that discouragement is broken. I pray anxiety is broken. I come against fear in Jesus' name. It's time for the glory of the Lord again. And I pray it for you, and I pray it for me. Come on, church, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the Word of God. I pray this Word over the people of God. I pray, Lord, that we would be people who would humble ourselves. I pray we'd be people that pray and seek your face. Turn from our wicked ways. And Lord, I believe you're going to hear from heaven. Hallelujah. I believe you're going to hear from heaven. You're going to forgive our sin. And you're going to heal our land. Lord, Canada needs to be healed. Lord, I pray this prayer over the country, over the nation. I pray it over the people of God. I pray healing power in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for those that are sick, they would be healed. I pray for those who are discouraged, they would be encouraged. I pray for those who are weak, they would be made strong. I pray for the people of God to rise up and seek the Lord while he may be found. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. It is time for the people of God to call on the name of the Lord. And I pray this over you, in Jesus' name, amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your head From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God You will live. 